Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. Today, I'll be going over this week's problem of the week. For the full problem and solution transcript, you can see the link in the description of this video on our YouTube channel. So this week's problem of the week asks you, given two uh, C2 functions, so the second derivatives, first and second derivatives are defined, well-defined, and exist for both functions f of x and g of x, where g of x is non-zero. It's asking us to find an expression for the second derivative with respect to x, so uh, d squared dx squared. So just essentially, we're just going to apply the quotient rule twice and see what we get. So we apply the quotient rule the first time. So what we're going to do one step at a time. So d1 dx1. This is just to signify which derivative we're on. So the first derivative, so d1 dx1. So this is just the quotient rule, which we're familiar with. So low, we're going to go low d high less high d low for a numerator. And underneath, low squared will go. So we have uh, g squared of x down here. And this is not to be confused with um, the second derivative because up until we have three derivatives, we still use the slashes instead of, the, um, instead of this notation here. So this is just g squared of x. Okay, so this is just a formula we're familiar with, just the you know, quotient rule applied one time, but we're going to go ahead and apply the quotient rule a second time now to find an expression in terms of f of x and g of x for the second derivative of all this with, with respect to x. So now, myself some room over here, so d squared dx squared. Okay, so we're going to use the quotient rule again, but now we have lots of other functions inside here uh, that need to be differentiated. We're going to use a product rule and the chain rule, some uh, you know, kind of implicit differentiation stuff in order to find an expression for the second derivative. So first of all, so low, so low, d high, so now we need to differentiate the numerator. So the derivative in the numerator, so d high, so we we need to use the product rule here, and we need to use the product rule here. So uh, the product rule applied to this is going to be g square, uh, sorry, g prime of x times f prime of x plus g of x times f double prime of x. Just applying the product rule there, minus. Now we're going to need to subtract off. Um, the, all of this, so we're going to do, use the product rule on this. We need to make sure we get it, we're getting our um, subtract, we're, we're um, distributing our negative signs. So I'm going to put this in parentheses over here. So we use the uh, product rule here as well. So we have f prime of x, g prime of x, plus f of x, g double prime of x. Okay, so and we're not done yet. So this is part of the numerator. So we have low d high less high d low. So high. So we're just going to copy down everything in the numerator. So g of x, just copying f prime of x minus f of x and g prime of x. Okay, so low d high less high d low. So now we're going to differentiate g squared of x um, with respect to x. So the derivative of this, we're going to need to use, we don't know, this isn't just like x squared, for example, so we can't just do 2x, but we can use implicit differentiation. Now we're kind of using the chain rule here, so what we end up getting is uh, 2 times g prime of x. Okay, so now we have low d high less high d low, and underneath low squared will go, so we just square the denominator again, and we get g to the fourth x. Okay, so as you can see, this is this entire thing up here is all of what's in the numerator, and this here is what's in the denominator. So we want to simplify this, so we can try to find some cancellation among the terms in the numerator to simplify this down. So what I'm going to do now is first I'm going to distribute the negative sign here. So in order to simplify this, I can just kind of erase the parentheses that I have here. So we distribute the negative sign. So we have minus f prime of x, g prime of x. And then this positive becomes a negative when we distribute that negative sign. So we're then subtracting off f of x times g double prime of x. Okay, so as we can see here, now what, now what we have here constraining us is our brackets. So all of these things, all of these functions in here, are all these expressions in here, 
terms or whatever you want to call them, uh, we, can, we can simplify them. So look, here we have g prime of x and we have f prime of x and we have f prime of x and we have g prime of x and we have positive and negative. So we can subtract those off. They cancel one another out. And we're left with g of x times f double prime of x minus f of x times g double prime of x. And these cannot cancel out and there's no further simplification we can do there. So we can just leave them like that. So I can go ahead and rewrite this as leaving on the outside g squared of x. And then we have in here, so this is gone, this is gone, so we have g of x f double prime of x minus f of x times g double prime of x. So that takes care of this first expression here, so low d high. And why don't we go ahead and um, we, can, we can distribute the negative sign here if we want. So we can take, oh, wait, we can't take away the parentheses yet because we're still multiplying by this term over here, but we can go ahead and move the negative sign in here. Well, why don't we do that at the next step? We'll just, we can just simplify, just do one step at a time here. Okay, so we're just going to copy this down just as is here. Minus uh, g of x f prime of x minus f of x g prime of x all times 2g prime of x. Okay, excellent. So and then the denominator just stays the same here. So in the denominator we just have g to the fourth of x, which stays the same. Okay, so making sure I've copied this down all correctly, g of x f prime of x minus f of x g prime of x. So it looks like we're all good here, so I can erase this bottom expression here. Okay, excellent. So now we're just going to go ahead and simplify this. As, as far as we can, so that means just distributing some terms at this point. So this is going to be equal to, so first of all, we have all these terms in the brackets here, and we have this multiplied, multiplying against all of them. So what we can do now to simplify further is we just multiply out and distribute that g squared of x over to the two terms in here. So um, this ends up being g squared of x times g of x. So, okay, so g squared of x times g of x is going to be g to the g cubed of x, so g cubed of x times f double prime of x minus f of x from here, f of x, g double prime of x times g squared of x. Okay, so I've multiplied these two terms in here. And now over here, as you can see on the outside, we have a 2g prime of x, so we can distribute out, or we really have a negative 2g prime of x, so we can distribute out that negative 2g prime of x against both of these terms in here. So what we're left with now is, so we have minus uh, 2 g prime of x, g of x, f prime of x. So, and then we have a minus a minus over here, so we end up getting a positive, so plus 2, uh, so, so we have g prime of x and g prime of x here, so I'm going to leave this f of x as g prime of x squared there. And then in the denominator, we just still have the same thing again, which is g to the fourth x. Okay, so now looking at this, we're going to try to determine right now if there's any more sim further simplification that we can do. So, okay, so all of our f double prime terms, we just have one f double prime term in the numerator. So this term can't be simplified with anything. Uh, g double prime terms, um, no other g double prime terms. This can't be simplified with anything. And we have here uh, g prime of x, g of x, f of x, and we don't have a g of x here, so it looks like we can't do any further simplification. So at this point, we could either be done here, or if we want to uh, write this in a more uh, kind of intuitive fashion, instead of just writing whatever things in whatever order we want, uh, we can express all the f, f, we put all the f of x's before the g of x's just as kind of a convention. So, because this is just kind of ad hoc, I just did this as I went. So, I'm essentially just going to move f double prime of x, g cubed of x minus f of x, 
g squared of x, putting the uh, derivative terms afterward, g double prime of x minus 2 f prime of x, g of x, g prime of x, plus 2 f of x, uh, g prime of x squared, all over in the denominator, all over g to the fourth of x. Okay, excellent. So it looks like we can't simplify things anymore. We could do some rearranging of these terms in the numerator if we want, but I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as, that, as is for the time being. So as you can see here, the first time we applied the quotient rule is very straightforward, just obtaining you know, the standard formula for the quotient rule. And then we applied the quotient rule again, and we, we had to take lots, we had to use, employ lots of other rules from calculus, like um, chain rule, product rule, and then quotient rule again. So uh, essentially, after all of that work and all the simplification, we ended up with this expression here, which is not, some, not an expression that you probably want to memorize or try to memorize, like you would memorize the first, the regular quotient rule. Um, because it's uh, very, very complicated. It would be easy to make mistakes when you're trying to remember this. But uh, yeah, so that will end up giving us the formula for given two differentiable functions, two C2 functions, f of x and g of x, where g of x is a non-zero. Otherwise, this would be undefined here. We have just found an expression in terms of f of x and g of x of the second derivative of the quotient of f of x, and g of, f of x over g of x um, with respect to x. So that's going to be it for this week's problem of the week. So for the full problem and solution, um, excuse me, <laughs> I mean to say, for uh, to see more problem of the week videos, excuse me, you can click on this link up here to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can click this link here and to visit us at centerofmath.org. You can click this link here. Thank you for watching.